hey everyone welcome back so in this video we shall take a look at the concept of stationarity so to make any statistical inferences about stochastic process based on uh, based on the observed data we usually need to make some uh, simplifying assumptions about the structure of that data uh, one such important and a common assumption is that of stationarity so what this assumes is that the probability laws underlying uh, the stochastic process or under underlying the time series do not change over time so basically uh, the time series is in a statistical equilibrium so there are two types of stationarity one is a strict version that is strict stationarity and a weak stationarity so we start with the strict stationarity uh, so if a process is strict station uh, if a time series say y is strictly stationary then if we take the set of uh, of uh, if we take the time series at n time points that is yt1 yt2 through ytn so we have this collection of the series at n time points so this is a set and i have this other set uh, again, this set contains n variables, but all of the time points are shifted by the same constant. So it's y t, uh, t1 plus h, this should be t2 plus h, and so on till tn plus h, right? So these two sets will have the same joint distribution. So I have a set of n random variables. Uh, I take another set. I move all the points. Either I can increase them or decrease them by the same amount then the two sets will have the same joint distribution and this will hold true for any n so i can have a set of one variable two variable hundred variables this property should hold true and it should hold true for any collection of time points so for example if n is equal to two that means we're looking at two time points uh, so y1 y3 will have the same distribution as y4 y6 right because I have incremented all of these points by 3, right? And y3, y5 will also have the same distribution because 4 minus 1 is 3 and 6 minus 1 is 5. So all these three sets of variables basically have the same joint distribution. So let's take a look at some of the implications of this. So if we choose n is equal to 1, right? then the distribution of yt and any other time point, so yt minus k for any k, right, uh, is the same. So, base, so basically, say y1 and y10 have the same distribution, y1 and y5000 will have the same distribution. So if these two variables have the same distribution, then their expectation is the same, right? So basically, expectation of y1, y2, y3, y4 is all the same so this implies that the mean function is constant for all the time points right to change the time points the mean function does not change so this is an implication of strict stationarity so if you plot your time series right um, you should not see the mean function evolving in time it should be a constant so similarly the variance will also be the same because the expectations are the same or basically because the joint distributions are the same all of the moments are the same so the second moment is all this is also the same which implies that the variance will be constant as well so let's see what happens if we take two time points so if we take two time points we have a pair of variables so distribution of yts is the same as this pair for any t any k and any s so therefore these two covariances are the same so just a bit of mathematical manipulation so if we take k is equal to s right so gamma t s remember our definition of gamma t s is covariance of y t and y s because of stationarity it is the same as this and now i'm saying k is equal to s so t minus s s minus s is zero and this is what we get okay so we need the assumption of stationarity to get this expression 
So if I swap these two variables, uh, covariance remains the same, right? Basic properties of covariance. And now again, I'm going to increment the time points by S minus T. So I'm adding S minus T here, adding S minus T here, I get this. So I get covariance of Y S minus T and Y zero. I can again swap these two to get this expression. So basically what we have here is covariance between y naught and y s minus t is the same as the covariance between y naught and y t minus s. So these two are the same. So basically the, it means that the covariance um, is the same as the covariance between y naught and y distance between t minus s. So it doesn't matter if it's s minus t or t minus s, the difference matters. So uh, basically gamma ts is the same as covariance between y naught and this absolute value of t minus s so we are only looking at the distance between the two points so what this tells you that this actual value of t and s doesn't matter so this can be 3 and 2 it can be 5 and 4 the covariance is the same so therefore i can then write it as gamma of 0 and this distance between the two points because the actual values of t and s are no longer important. So this is a notation that we're going to use. So if we, are, if we have a time series that is strictly stationary, then instead of writing gamma t s, we're just going to write gamma k, and gamma k is going to mean covariance between y t and t minus k, right? So the distance between these two time points is k. Similarly, the correlation is also, I'm going to refer to it as rho k, that means correlation between y t and y t minus k. So when dealing with stationary uh, structures or stationary time series, I will uh, refer to the auto uh, covariance and the autocorrelation function uh, only by using lags. So here's a quick question. In question one, we have a standard normal distribution it's identical and independently distributed is wt strictly stationary and in part two we have a white uh, wt is just a white noise so white noise means basically we know that the terms are uncorrelated mean is zero variance is one can we conclude from this that the series is strictly stationary so pause this video give it a thought and uh, see what you get. So the answer for one is yes, and the second one is no. So white, uh, the, so the white noise is not stationary because the only thing it tells you is that the time points are uncorrelated. It does not tell you any information about the joint distribution. In part one, because the terms are identical and independent, we know exactly what the joint distributions are going to look like. And uh, if you uh, think about it, you will see that this is strictly stationary. So strict stationarity is a lot to ask from a data set. Uh, it is uh, very difficult to verify if the data set actually follows strict stationarity. Uh, so instead, we, uh, so, uh, we have this concept of weak stationarity. So an important in implication of the strict stationarity was that the covariance depended only on the time lag, right? So we are going to use this idea to uh, develop this concept of weak stationarity. So the weak stationarity is basically a process where the mean value uh, function is constant in time and therefore it does not depend on time. And the autocovariance depends only on the lag between the two times or the difference between the two time points. So one and two, uh, if a process is strictly stationary, one and two are, uh, are automatically satisfied. Um, so from now onwards, uh, we will uh, reserve this term stationary for weak stationary, okay? So if I say it's stationary, if a time series is stationary, it means it's weakly stationary. If it's stationary in the strict sense, uh, it will be mentioned uh, explicitly. 
So thus for weekly stage 3 processes, expectation of y at time point t1 is the same as the mean or the expectation of y at time point t2. Similarly, the covariances, so this relation will also hold. So you can see that 3 and 5 is if 3 plus 7 is 10 and 5 plus 7 is 12. So basically, um, these sets differ only by constant lag. So the covariance structures are also the same. This statement follows from this first assumption. The second statement, this one follows, you need both 1 and 2. So give this a thought and see if uh, you understand why both conditions 1 and 2 are needed for this covariance to hold true. So to summarize, um, for stationary processes, right, even if it's weakly stationary, autocovariance only depends on the lag and therefore we will focus only on the lag. So instead of referring to uh, this autocovariance um, by the two time points, we will only refer to it as the distance uh, by the distance between the two time points. So for the variance, right, so variance of yt is basically covariance of yt and yt. And this is the same as saying the lag between them is zero. So instead of variance of yt, we can write this gamma zero. And the autocorrelation function will similarly, you can see if you just plug in the formula uh, for the autocorrelation, you'll see it also depends on the lag. So let's see if white noise turns out to be uh, stationary. So I mean weakly stationary. So this is the white noise. We know that its mean or the expected value is zero for any time point. So therefore it is free of time. So the first condition is satisfied. And if you recall the auto covariance function, it looks like this. So basically the auto covariance function depends only on the lag and therefore white noise is uh, weakly stationary. So here are some questions. Um, take a moment to think about them, pause the video uh, and continue when you're ready, uh, when you're done thinking about this. So the random walk is not strictly stationary because its mean depends on time. Uh, so therefore it cannot be strictly stationary. If it's not strictly stationary, uh, because of the mean function, right? Because the mean function depends on time, it cannot be weakly stationary either. If a series is strict, strictly stationary, it is definitely weakly stationary because then the mean function is constant and the covariance has to depend only on lag. And the converse is not true. So we take a look at another example. So we have a white noise and this is uh, an average of the white noise terms. So the expected value of Vt is going to be zero. So we know that this has a constant mean function. Uh, it has a constant value of zero. The covariance of this Vt, which we have uh, looked at before, looks like this. So the covariance function basically takes this value if the distance between s and t is 0 or s is equal to t. This value of the distance is 1. This value of the distance is 2. And if it's greater than 2, it is 0. So the covariance depends only on the distance between the time points. And therefore, this process Vt or this time series Vt is weakly stationary. So is this weak stationarity or the stationarity realistic? So here is another example. This is white noise and we have an AR1 process. AR1 process is not stationary, right? Uh, because it changes in time here. So we're going to perform this differencing operation. What is a differencing operation is denoted by this delta T. Delta T is basically 
x t minus x t minus 1. So you subtract the previous time point. That's all that you're doing. So if you do this, then you are left with w t, which is a white noise. And as we saw earlier, this is stationary. So maybe x t or the autoregressive process or ER1 process is not stationary. However, when you difference it, uh, when you uh, do this differencing operation, you get a stationary series. So the difference series is stationary. So basically, many times uh, the time series will not be stationary. However, if there, there'll be ways of transforming them, we can do some kind of transformation, like we did the differencing operation here, so that the transformed series can be treated as a stationary uh, time series. So this is a practice problem. Um, try solving this uh, this question. This basically you'll be showing here that the time series is a symmetric function. It is symmetric around the origin. So that's all for this video. Uh, in the next video, we shall take a look. Uh, we shall take a look at the concept of joint stationarity.